of what the public is supporting. 90% of the public agrees that equal pay for women. Universal background checks, 86%. Feeding the poor, 72%. So I would take the first one because that's the 90% of what the public. I have a national network of colleagues through community work, through the Northern Virginia Urban League and the National Urban League. So I would bring those groups together to make sure we are up there with our congressmen all around the country getting this one passed. People agree on it, people think that we can do it, but I would add the part about access to capital as well, because I don't think women should just have equal pay. I think they should be equally entrepreneurs or anything else, so that they, since there are so many single women who are providing for their families. I think we get one win, and then we go down the list. One thing I would do for the district that you don't need Congress for is to go around to these contractors, these federal contractors, these big businesses, and make sure every one of your children and grandchildren have a summer job, a summer internship, and a scholarship. You know, at the 8th District Democratic Committee, I said this was an awful question because there's more than one thing that we have to get done. And what really matters is our approach. And as a freshman, we may not pass a bill with our own name on it, but the two issues that I see as most pressing would be raising the minimum wage and fighting climate change with a national clean energy policy. And what I, what I think is more important than saying that we're going to pass our own bill is how we're going to pass it. And that includes reaching across the aisles I've done in Richmond, I've demonstrated I can do it, and that includes working with Republicans in marginal districts who are frankly afraid they're going to be beat, or with conservative Republicans who we uh, can't beat, but we know uh, we, if it, we work together that things can get done. So that's what I've done on the issues of human trafficking. I, I had a bill signing in Richmond where I had a representative of now on one shoulder and a representative of the Family Foundation on the other. And the Family Foundation and I disagree about 95% of the time, but I found that 5%. And when I found a right-wing Republican, or several, voting against me in committee, I just went to the Family Foundation and got their endorsement for the bill. Thank you. So I agree with everything Laverne and Adam just said. <laughs> and if you go to my website, LevineForCongress.com, what we're fighting for, you're going to see a whole bunch of things I'm fighting for. If I could achieve one thing, though, it would be to make college affordable for students today. Because I'll tell you, it affects our entire economy. I got a plan to do it. Since I've been talking about this in every speech I've given, I now hear something. Other candidates talk about that. I think that's great. We all need to talk about it. I want them to endorse my specific plan. Here's how it goes. The federal government needs to negotiate prices down, just like they should do in Medicare for drug prices. Here's how they do it. They go to state public universities. What's been happening? Student loans, we find that the amounts have gone down over the years. So now the federal government's making a profit off of our students, which I find offensive. All right? What they do is they negotiate with the states and they say, look, states, you got to give a sufficient number of scholarships you got to keep tuition costs down. In return, you get more federal money. By this federal-state partnership, we can take the 76% of American students that go to public universities and make it affordable again, just like it was when my father went to school. And then the private universities are going to have to compete with the public option. That's how we should do it in healthcare. That's how she would do it with students. Thank you very much. Well, for someone who's been a strong advocate for economic development and, and actually making things happen, one thing that I think can address all of our issues uh, is uh, to make certain that we uh, refinance and fund the Transportation Surface Act because that is critical in terms of the billions of dollars that will be there to help us to rebuild our infrastructure, not only here in Northern Virginia, but throughout America. Our roads, our bridges, the transportation system, things are just falling apart. Our sewer systems, uh, we're all dealing with it locally here in Northern Virginia, and right here in our own backyards. It's going to cost us hundreds of millions of dollars that we don't even have. But when you make those types of investment, it provides the opportunity for expanded jobs. Those jo folks with higher pay will then buy homes. Um, they can pay for their kids to go off to college. It helps solve a lot of the economic challenges that families face today. And in terms of how do I expect to get it done, I have proven leadership. I'm a team worker, team builder, team leader, and I'm the type of person that can reach across the aisle as well because when, on my city council, when we, were, when we were adopting a budget with two Republicans, all I did was a, the night of the budget adoption was get the two Republicans the motions to make, and they voted for a budget that they said they were against.
If I could wave a magic wand, I'd raise the minimum wage. 16 and a half million Americans, their income would go up. It would lift 900,000 people out of poverty. But I don't think I can wave a, minimum, a magic wand. But what we can do is raise the refundable earned income tax credit. It's something that even Republicans can like because it rewards work. And it will lift more people out of poverty faster than even the minimum wage. I would go to every Republican on the relevant committees and ask them to do something that motivates work, that motivates, lifts people out of poverty, that doesn't necessarily hit private sector budgets. It's a public investment from the federal government. And it's something we can do in the next term that will actually make the biggest difference for the people living in poverty. I was the head of congressional and federal affairs for Virginia for four years. I've worked on with both sides of the aisle, and I've been successful in Richmond working across the aisle as well, passing or being the chief co-patron of 11 different bills in just my first three years. Climate change. The fact is, Virginia should be the leader in the mid-Atlantic for renewable energy. Wind off the coast, solar in the valley, the best place in America to, to grow switchgrass is in Martinsville, Virginia. We're talking about easy fixes through the Commerce Committee in Congress and various environmental groups to get tax incentives for renewable energy across the Commonwealth. And we have the DMME now in Virginia to take advantage of those tax credits. It doesn't have to be legislation. It can be backdoor ways to address policy changes that need to happen. A second issue is this. The will is there for addressing handgun violence in the United States. 91% of people in Virginia are for background checks. We can do it if there's a will and a way. Well, I, I, like I like to say, everything that they said, because they're absolutely right, and I have to limit myself, I know, but I, our veterans are important, so I like to see that backlog cleaned up. But what, another thing, though, is our route run corridor. I support the yellow line, and, and I know that with, with transit, we will have economic rejuvenation. As I told you before, my first job was on Route 1 at Good Shepherd Housing and Family Services. Unfortunately, not much has changed is that, except that we have a lot of payday lenders now along that corridor. Not only do they prey, prey on poor military families, and we don't pay them enough, they're also preying on our civilians. So, Revitalization of the Route 1 corridor by getting that yellow line out there would actually help our economy, and that's one thing I would certainly focus on. Thank you. I mentioned earlier that we need to restore the teeth and put the teeth back and get preclearance into the Voting Rights Act. I think that's extraordinarily important. I've worked on uh, trying to help diversify the economy. If Virginia has one big problem, it's our economy is too dependent on federal spending. Up in here in Northern Virginia, and it's less than it used to be, 35% or so. In Hampton Roads, 50% of the economy is dependent directly on federal spending. One way we do that is help our smallest technology companies in bioscience. In 2008, I chaired a biotech commission where we produced a set of package of uh, reforms and initiatives, and now we've uh, started to grow a biotech industry in our state. We need to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, garden that and cherish it and husband it and grow it. CIT is a, out in the Dulles Quarter, is a place where this is done. Uh, we have built uh, wet lab space out there due to the bill that we passed. STEM education uh, is going gonna, is gonna to provide Hi. the workers that we need to get into the new uh, jobs of the new economy. So that, those are the things I would do to help diversify our economy. Let me, let me ask a question. How many homeowners do we have here? How many, how many homeowners? So, uh, you know, we just came out of the Great Recession. And I'll tell you, in the last two years, my home, I'm a homeowner, yo-yoed, down 100000 up 100000 I mean, what did we buy, junk bonds? No, we bought homes, right? And we wanted to build equity in our homes. I worked at the Treasury Department and watched and explored the subprime foreclosure crisis. Now, we have come out of the Great Recession. But our economy, 20% of our economy is wrapped up in the housing market. In my first term, I want to stabilize the housing market. And don't think that the Dodd-Frank bill alone will do that. 
So we've got to work hard, and that's, some, that's an issue that Democrats and Republicans can work on together, but to stabilize our housing market and stabilize your home and the equity <coughs> in it is my first priority uh, if you elect me to Congress. Thank you.